Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. Today we're gonna have another look at the Loch Lomond distillery but today we are not gonna look at the Loch Lomond single malt but the Loch Lomond grain distilling. The Loch Lomond single malt is what we know as Loch Lomond and the grain distilling is really not for the single malt but it is for the blend industry. If you use grain whiskey, you're not allowed to call it single malt. If you use a, a column still, you're not allowed to use it single malt. If you have a single malt, you have to use 100% malt and pot stills. Today, we're gonna look at the grain for the blend. And the blend is mostly used in yeah, relatively low priced supermarket uh, whiskies that are yeah, relatively cheap. So this is like the the, the alcoholic part of this whiskey. And when you look at the production capacities, Loch Lomond is still pretty big with their single malt. They have like four, five million uh, liters of pure alcohol capacity per year. But the grain part with that huge uh, column stills, they can produce two, uh, 20 million liters of pure alcohol per year. They're not producing that, that's just their capacity limit. But they used to be able to do 20 million liters a year and that is really sold in bulk and uh, the body of uh, a blend, which is then married together with a few molds to give it a bit more character. So this is what we're gonna look today and nearly all of the stuff that is being produced this way ends up in the Loch Lomond single malt whiskey. It ends up mostly in blends that you know, are highly available on the market. So now we're entering the grain side of the Loch Lomond distillery. And behind me is the malt mill. Yeah. I said malt mill and this is not a mistake because here you mill the malt that is used for the grain whiskey. So a grain whiskey is not 100% malt. This here does about 500 kilograms per hour if it's turned on. And the real grain mill does about five tons per hour. So 10 times the amount. So the, the mixture between these two is um, about 10 to 1. And you do need the malted barley because the malted barley has enzymes that split the starch from the grain and the malt into the sugars. And these sugars are the best to ferment and get the right kind of wash. But more of that later when we come to the, the mashing. What they do use is they use a very high protein malt that you wouldn't use for single malt whiskey and that is because it contains more enzymes and therefore the enzyme reactions work better. The grain is uh, a wheat grain and you can't get that much wheat in Scotland so that's why they take the wheat only from Britain. Yeah they restrict themselves to British malt but uh, grain but it's normal British wheat. Yeah. It's about yeah, five tons per hour, and that is yeah, quite a lot for a Scottish distillery. The first thing we do with our wheat flour is we mix it with water. It takes about 2.8 cubic meters to be uh, mixed with one ton of wheat flour, and which is a, a weight ratio of nearly roughly three to one. It is mixed here in the steeping tank and then it, it steeps for quite a while and is being pumped over to the cooker. Um, there's a steam injector and it's being heated up to 65 degrees Celsius. And in comparison to the Americans, we don't cook with a lot of pressure. So this is only done at 65 degrees Celsius and with no overpressure. So yeah, that's the difference between wheat and corn. The wheat is much softer and doesn't need to be need that much force to be opened up. What happens then is uh, it is being cold, cooled down from 65 degrees to uh, a bit lesser temperature 
because the enzymes need a bit lower temperature to work very properly. At the very back of the room, we have a special pump that is mixing the, the malts, it's barley slushy, together with what we have right now. And this is cracking down the floury substance into a very sugary substance. So you have the starch, which is being split up. So you have a lot of sugar because this is very important for the next steps for the alcoholic fermentation. Then we just in the last step, we need to take it down from these uh, 60 degrees Celsius to about room temperature, 20, 22 degrees Celsius, because this is the optimal temperature to start the fermentations off because yeast doesn't want to have it that, um, that warmth and you don't want to have it uh, ferment so fast. But this is done in the next step. The fermentation is a big part of the grain production and the size and scale of it all is amazing. We have this room here has 12 fermentation tanks with 100,000 liters of volume. That is really, really a lot. And then we have another eight tanks outside with each holding 200,000 liters of volume. And this is incredible. Each tank, each fermentation process takes about 48 to 60 hours. So this is the only thing that is not really done continuously. It's done in batches with one tank is one batch. Um, the, the process requires cooling. But with these huge tanks, you can't really do cooling with a, a water frame or with cooling inside. You can't really do that. And that's why you have a heat exchanger at the bottom. So you drain the whole uh, tank in the bottom, cool the liquid that comes out, pump it up to the top and fill it in. So you have recirculation. And that cools down the liquid. You have a cooler fermentation temperature. And that means you have slower fermentation and more favorable flavors that are coming out of this grain fermentation product. This here is now where the magic happens and we produce the high spirited alcohol. This is the main column still they use at Loch Lomond and it's about six stories tall. In Scotland they call this the analyzer, which is like the first part of the distillation. Uh, the second part of the distillation is uh, the rectifier which then produces the really really high strength alcohol. They have two column stills this is like the normal one and then they have a half size one and the big one produces 2,000 liters of spirit per hour and the small one produces a thousand liters per hour. They both come up off with about 94 percent alcohol and at 94 percent alcohol you talk more about alcohol rather than flavor. So this is really raw spirit that is meant for the blend industry as a body and the flavors come rather from, from, uh, uh, from the, the malt parts and from the cask rather than from what is produced within the spirit still. But uh, still, uh, whiskey industry has regulations. You're not allowed to go above 97% uh, alcohol and that means all above that you would declare as a vodka. Here we go with 94% uh, alcohol so it's well below the range and this can be called a grain whiskey. So um, when you produce a grain whiskey in the blend you can't just use normal grain whiskey and call the blend you you have to create something so in order to do a blend you have to get spirit from other distilleries. And what they do here is they trade with other distilleries. They, they all know each other in Scotland. And they go to another distillery and they say, hey, we give you that, you give us uh, your spirit. And then they cast it and store it in their warehouses, right down where they got it from. And after a certain amount of time, then they can uh, have the matured spirits from different distilleries and they can do the blend, blending together. Um, what is then very important is when you do a blend, you have to have at least two distilleries in there and uh, you are, I think you're not allowed to, to name what is in there 
as in percentage wise so that is always a secret with the blends because you don't want to disturb other distilleries in their brand um, what i like about it you see a lot of different distilleries here and so this gives the lemon really the good chance to create many 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 expressions